right, everybody, welcome back to the Cabral Concept. Can't wait to dive into today's high performance health show, all about anti aging, longevity, living your best life. So, we're going to be talking about how to eliminate zombie cells, why this is so important, because as we age, like it or not, we begin to accumulate more of these. So, if you listen into my previous shows on zombie cells, you will already have a little bit of a primer for today's show. But if not, that is okay, because what I'm going to do is recap what are these zombie cells, sometimes called senescent cells. And I'm going to be bringing you the six, five to six most powerful ways to eliminate them. And then I'll link up previous shows if you are not as adept at those, the knowledge of those, we'll go deeper. Always happy to do that. Again, today's show notes will be at stephencabral.com slash 3219 for all the details. Let's dive right in. So if you've never heard about zombie cells before, technically it's called cellular senescence or just senescent cells. What that means is that inside of our body, our cells are meant to turn over anywhere from days to uh, could be months or in some cases, maybe a year. And what this allows us to do as humans is to then as these old cells die out, they go through a programmed cell death where they're programmed to die. I'll go over that in a moment so that new healthy cells can start out. Well, during this process, especially as we age, some of these cells, they stop dividing but they never actually die off. They don't go through the apoptosis, which is basically an implosion of the cell. The cell doesn't quite disintegrate, but it falls apart. And then our macrophages and other um, white blood cells come in and clean up. And that's totally normal. That's supposed to happen. But some of these cells, they don't get the signal. They're supposed to just essentially sacrifice themselves for those new cells to begin to come about. And when this happens, we get what are called zombie cells. Again, think about it. It's like these cells, they're not really doing anything anymore, but they're moving around. They have, they have some signaling, but they're moving around. And what they come in contact with, they essentially create inflammation. They create inside of your body more oxidative stress. So on a previous show, I talked about inflammaging. It might have even just been over the last week or two, and I'll link that up. Yes, episode 3205, so I'll, I'll link that up here today. Because if you haven't heard about inflammaging, it is going mainstream now. Whenever the Wall Street Journal or you know a, a popular publication publishes an article, we say, okay, good, this is starting to get out to mainstream public, and they introduce this term inflammation. Now, it's been around for many decades, uh, but they are bringing it to the general public. So it's great. We can start to talk about these things uh, and continue to bring up that level of education for our entire world. You you know, probably have a little bit more of that knowledge, and which is amazing, but we also want to be able to share this with family, friends, and loved ones. So as we get older, we get more of these zombie cells. As we get more zombie cells, we get more inflammation, which leads to faster aging called inflammaging. There's two main reasons why these cells um, continue to to multiply as zombie cells and create more inflammation. And that is the first one, which is autophagy. So our bodies are not as efficient at getting rid of them, cleaning them up, getting rid of those old, weak cells, right? So as we get older, we stop doing some of the things that we did when we were younger or just with aging, we are not as great at autophagy, which is basically self-cleaning, removing the old, out with the old, in with the new. We don't, we're not as good at with that. All right. So the other part, though, is something called apoptosis. Apoptosis is the signal for cell death. So let's just say with our red blood cells, every 90 to 120 days or so, you're supposed to get the signal that, okay, your time to move on. You've lived your life. We need the new, fresh ones coming in. But sometimes they don't get the signal. Right? And that's called apoptosis. Apoptosis is programmed cell death. This is when the cell is programmed to die. It didn't quite get the signal, but it doesn't carry on its functions as well. And now it's just floating around in zombie land. And that is a zombie cell. That is cellular senescence. Okay, so what can we do about it so that we don't continue to create all this low-grade inflammation that shows up as what? Joint pain, low energy, low mood, brain fog. And then on the outside, it shows up as wrinkles, sagging skin, uh, age spots, etc. right? So it shows up on both the outside and the inside in terms of both physical and emotional-based symptoms. Okay, so it's our job now to do what? Well, think about it. The two things that we're suffering from based on this, these senescent cells is 
autophagy isn't as good as it was, and apoptosis isn't as great as it was. So we know, though, through actually clinically proven science, and they even knew it 6,000 years ago in Ayurvedic medicine, that there are things we can do to clean up these senescent cells. Now, I'm not going to get into certain peptides and stem cells here today. In the future, I'll be doing more shows on that. That's a little bit more advanced. Some of it's still experimental, some of it well-proven. But what we can do is we can actually use lifestyle that I'm going to talk about here today. So I'm not going to talk about nutritional supplements. I'm not going to talk about stem cells. I'm not going to talk about peptides. What I am going to talk about, though, is natural lifestyle-based things that anybody can do for almost free. All right, so let's get into it. The first one is this, and that's why I kind of called it, you know, five or six, because the rest of these are creating this first one, which is called hermesis or hermetic-based response. Okay, so that means that our body needs a particular stressor on it in order to become stronger and more efficient and for it to change. Now, this is why I said, as we get older, oftentimes we get more sedentary and we're not doing as many of the activities as we were when we were younger. So not only are we becoming more sedentary, our body is no longer even as efficient. And since it's not as efficient, doesn't produce ATP as well, all of these different things with the mitochondria, what happens? Well, when we do as much activity as we used to, we're more sore. It takes longer to recover. We don't feel as well. Right? So we need to fix we need to fix both sides of the equation. But part of that is through these next few items that I'm going to give you. The first one is a diet high in polyphenols. Well, what are polyphenols? Polyphenols are the bright colors and pigments that come in foods. Fruits and vegetables are the easiest examples. Wild blueberries, right? Everybody really, unless you're sensitive to blueberries, Blueberries or raspberries or pomegranates, great things to have on a daily basis. I like to push people towards wild blueberries or organic blueberries. And the reason is, is that most people don't get any purple color in their diet. Purple is a great one for anti-aging, longevity, has anthocyanins, very unique. So a great thing to have. Others though, would be your reds and your oranges, your yellows, uh, even the whites in things like Onions, garlic, cauliflower, et cetera, you can get. Greens are pretty easy, right? With your, uh, maybe it's your arugula or bok choy or broccoli, et cetera. And you want to try to get all of these. Eat a rainbow on a daily basis. So that that's the biggest goal. Now, some of these are also included in items like wild salmon, right? Brightly colored, that reddish color. If you're not getting the farm raised, you get the nice wild one, uh, brightly colored as well. So high polyphenol diet, also herbs and spices are great to add that to that as well. Things like turmeric and uh, let's say thyme and rosemary, really great for the body. So when I mention all of these, keep in mind all of these will improve overall anti-inflammatory nature of the body, improve then immune cell signaling, and improve apoptosis and um, autophagy with adding this intermittent fasting component. So we're going to talk about intermittent fasting just for a moment. I have a whole series of podcasts on intermittent fasting that we'll also link up today at stephencabral.com slash 3219. That's where all today's show notes are. So intermittent fasting. Now, there's always an exception. Don't get me wrong, right? When I was um, in my teens and early 20s, I couldn't do intermittent fasting. I had a really bad reactive hypoglycemia. And so I had to really balance my nutrition in and eat before bed so that I wouldn't crash during the night, wake up sweating and uh, low blood sugar. But for most people, that's just not the case. It's not even one out of a thousand, right? So it's you know 99 plus percent of people are able to go 12 hours, not a problem. Six at night to six in the morning, six at night to eight in the morning, like whatever feels right for them. But intermittent fasting improves autophagy almost better than anything else. Now, low calorie, meaning keeping your calories below or right at what you need for the day. Well, again, that, that does help as well. But we know not over fasting, but fasting is also a hermetic stressor in the body. So it does more than just autophagy. It actually provides a little stress. That little stress then improves mitochondria, 
and it improves uh, cleaning house because no new food is coming in. So we talked a little bit about yesterday, uh, fasting day on the one day reset diet before a flex meal or cheat meal. I think that show is probably worth checking out as well. That was episode 3218. All right, so intermittent fasting. Again, I have a bunch of shows. All of those are free. I'll link them up for you here today. And one that's often overlooked, and that's because people love to hate it, and that's exercise. Walking is great. Highly recommend walking, especially after meals. Phenomenal, like definitely recommend it for everybody. 7,500 to 10,000 steps a day. I think every human should get that unless physically not able to. And then we can use an upright bike or we can do you know whatever works for that person. But exercise, there's two different types. We have more aerobic based and we have more anaerobic like resistance training, weightlifting would be anaerobic and then aerobic would be your walking, your jogging, your et cetera. Okay, we need both. The walking, jogging, as I talked about during my keynote at Reimagine Health Summit, that actually creates more mitochondria, creates bio, uh, uh, mitochondrial biogenesis. And the strength training makes the body more efficient. It helps burn more calories. It helps boost the metabolism. It helps produce better ATP. So all of those things, extremely important, but both forms of exercise help to better balance the immune system. And the immune system then, if it's not dysregulated, can help to remove those zombie cells that shouldn't be there in the first place, right? So we need a good functioning immune system. All right, the next two is contrast therapy. We did a a nice presentation. We had a nice presentation on that at Reimagine Health Summit as well. And that is hot and cold, but you can do them separately or you can choose one, it's up to you. My highest recommendation is sauna. Sauna can be done easily four to five times a week. And the hotter the temperature, the less time you need in it, by basically 19 minutes was the study that was done over many, many years, proved to decrease all-cause mortality by over 40% and cardiovascular risk by over 60%. I mean, that is unbelievable. As I've said it before, I know other people have said it since then, uh, but it would be a trillion dollar drug. That would be a trillion dollar dollar drug. And a sauna costs you anywhere from $500 up to $5,000. You can get whatever your favorite one is. All my favorites are at stephencabral.com slash resources. Those are all my favorite companies that I use myself, my family, and in our, our practice. And I recommend them uh, for you as well. But th- I mean, there's no doubt that sauna is one of the greatest health tools we have. So without a doubt. It will improve everything from cardiovascular risk to blood pressure to blood sugar uh, down the line, all causes of mortality. And it's been proven over and over. So it is a stressor on the body and therefore it helps with apoptosis and uh, believe it or not, with cardiovascular and burning calories and autophagy. So really great one to use. And I definitely recommend it over cold therapy. It's not that cold therapy can't be great for some people. It is absolutely a strong hermetic stressor. And for those people that have well-balanced adrenals and well-balanced nervous system and well-balanced thyroid, yeah, they can absolutely do cold three to five times per week uh, for whatever the right temperature is for them. It doesn't need to be 37 degrees like a lot of people are doing. It could be there's benefits at 56 degrees and below. So you do that for three to five minutes, And what happens is you get a stress response. Now, I recommend working with breath work, calming the nervous system, not heightening it while you're in that cold plunge. So those therapies, those five main therapies, cleaning up the diet, more of a Mediterranean diet focused on high antioxidant and polyphenols, intermittent fasting on a daily basis, improving your exercise both aerobically and anaerobically, adding heat-based therapy, and then a bonus would be eventually moving into some cold therapy as well. Using these tips will help to naturally lower your zombie cells, your cellular senescence. And then after that, and only after that, we can start to talk about all the great nutritional supplements and different peptides that you may be looking into in order to lower those externally from a topical standpoint or internally from a supplement standpoint as well. And again, I teach all of this in depth. If this is interesting to you inside of High Performance Health, you can head on over to highperformancehealth.org and check it all out. You'll see the details there. And uh, would obviously welcome you to that high performance health community, but which is really focused on longevity, anti aging, and thriving. Uh, for a healthy 100 years or more. All right, everybody, hopefully that was helpful. As always, you can find the show notes at stephencabral.com slash 3219 for all the big takeaways and previous shows on this topic. I talked about highperformancehealth.org. You can find that link there as well. But most importantly, if you found this helpful, do feel free to share this show with anyone you believe you, it could serve. Take care, everybody. Have an amazing day. I'll be back tomorrow with a brand new Cabral Concept. 
Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.